Okay, it's about the hottest day of the year right now, and I'm going to build this microphone preamp circuit. That's another one of the circuits I found, and I thought I'd build this up and, uh, well, hear what it sounds like. Welcome to Cool Dude Clem's Electronic Workshop with me, your host, Cool Dude Clem. Okay, so over to a better picture and a better microphone. So, this is the preamp circuit. It has a common base input right here. And the only real difference between common base and common emitter is that, well, with this circuit, instead of feeding the signal into Q1's base, we're feeding the signal into Q1's emitter. And the only downside to that is that that means this circuit is going to have a rather low input impedance. We still need to bias the transistor's base with R3 and R4 here. And we still take the signal out of the collector right here. So then we go over to the gain control. And we've got another stage of amplification here with Q2. And Q3 just seems to be used as a buffer here. And then we've got a little bit of feedback here, biasing Q2 so it can actually do its amplifying. So before I start building the circuit, I just want to talk about what kind of microphones and speakers we can use as microphones. So this is a dynamic microphone. It can be used. Although this one is 600 ohms, so it might be a little bit too high impedance for this particular preamp. But yeah, this does mean that things such as piezoelectric elements are out. Far too high impedance, not going to work. This is a carbon granule microphone. It won't work. This is a condenser microphone. It too will not work, at least without modifications. This, however, will work. This is a 4 ohm speaker from a Dura brand home theatre thing. That will work fine. And other speakers like these, they should also work fine. Okay, so these are all the speakers that I'm going to test and see how well they work as microphones. And I cannot get them all in the shop. So I'm going to go from this little speaker over here, right on the far left, to this big-ass speaker out of a 70s hi-fi. Some of them might work better than others, and some of them might be completely unintelligible. They are all 8 ohms, apart from this speaker here and this speaker here. This one is 4 ohms, this one is 134. And trust me, my carpet does not look that bad in real life, but the camera makes it look 100 times worse. Okay. I've built up the circuit, and I'm about to test it. Um, pay no attention to the stuff on the left over here. That's left over from the previous video. Doing a bit of a John Audio tech here. So, yeah, just pretend that's not there. So this is the preamp circuit. I'm about to power it up. But I've got this connected up to my Vesta Fire tape deck. Because, well, I'm going to need some way of monitoring it. So, let's just bring that over, if we can. Get at least one VU meter in the thing. Let's see if this thing works. I've probably effed up somewhere. I usually do, but we'll see. So I'm going to connect the black here, which is the ground. Unless you're American, where black is hot. Which has never made any sense to me, but whatever. Now I'm going to connect 12 volts. Here's hoping nothing goes up in smoke or blows up. Oh, stupid crocodile clips. I try to open this up and stupid thing spins around. See, open it up, it spins around. Try to open it up, it spins around. Get on there, you bastard. Okay. No strange noises and no smoke. Nothing's blown up, so that's good. So I'm just going to touch the signal wire, see if anything comes through. Oh yeah. Apparently it makes cat noises too. So, I'm going to say that's working. Now to connect something up to this and see if it actually works. So I'm going to use these two crocodile clips. I'm going to use my green for my ground. And my yellow for my signal. So there's ground, there's signal, I 
Right, let's connect this up. Hopefully without blowing out my speakers. If I can get this connected up. And connect this. Yep, I think it's working. It's picking up a lot of interference, but I'm gonna speak into it. Yep, I think it's working. So, what I'm going to do now is I'm gonna do a direct hookup from this preamp and all the different speakers and microphones and we'll see how well it works. Okay, well this is like the 50th attempt at recording this. Last attempt was going pretty good until this camera decided to randomly shut off and I don't know how much of the footage I actually got. So, anyway, yeah. I've got a bunch of random speakers here that I'm going to test and see how well they work as microphones. Already got this one hooked up and ready to go. But I'm sure you don't want to see my ugly face in this detail, so I'll just go picture in picture. Ah, that's much better. So, we're going to test this little speaker here, and we're going to do this on a direct hookup. So this is the one we're going to start with. This seems to be picking up pretty good. Sounds rather tinny, but... Yeah, this one actually seems to be working good. Is this camera still recording good? Right, then. Um, let's go on to this one. Right, let's go on this one. It's not my voice. as good as this one, but... Seems to be working. I'll just turn the gain up to its fullest. So, this is the little one and a half inch speaker picking up my voice. Right, now let's move on to some of the actual other paper cone speakers. So, we're going to the land of Durabrand. So, so, here we are in the land of Durabrand with this little two inch, maybe two and a half inch, four inch, um, four ohm speaker. And this one seems to be the most sensitive of the lot. I only have this up to about halfway. And yeah. Right, let's move on to some of the others. Right, here we are with... Oh, this is really... Yeah, this one's really sensitive. This is the three-inch speaker. And that seems to be working really well. I don't really have much to say about that. I think it might be a bit boomy, but yeah. So this one is a 4 inch mid-range, so we're going to see how this one sounds. Okay, just adjusting my levels, and yes, as I predicted, this one is a lot more sensitive. Let's see how far we can go up. I'm going to turn the gain up all the way. Oh yeah, that is really feeding back. But yeah, just look how sensitive this is. I'm holding this this far away, and it's picking up that well. Getting a little bit of feedback from the speaker, but yeah, this is, uh, yeah. So, if that's how good a 4-inch speaker picks up, let's see how, um, yeah, let's see how good this speaker picks up. 6-inch speaker. I'm turning the level up. Oh yeah, yep, this is, this is picking up good. I've barely got the gain set on anything, and this is picking up like a boss. I might need to set the gain a little higher, actually, but yeah. So, um, yeah. Hello. 
My name is Jane. I've got big boobies. Oh yeah, that picks up low sounds really good. Like I thought it would. I'm gonna test it with a real microphone. Or my rather bashed up microphone. So here I am, using a real microphone. Okay, we've got quite a lot of hum there. Let me just see if I can do anything about that. And yeah, so, a real microphone here, and it doesn't seem as sensitive as the other things, but that might just be because this is such a low impedance circuit that it's a bit too low impedance for the microphone itself. But yeah, with the gain turned all the way up, and speaking about this far away from the microphone, it actually does, doesn't seem to be picking up too bad. I know. Just for ships and giggles, gonna use a piezo device. Okay, I'm curious as to whether this could be used to amplify a little electric condenser microphone. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take out capacitor 1 here. And I'm just going to put this little wire in here, so I can connect directly to the transistor's emitter. So this one goes to the um, input transistor's emitter, this one goes to ground, and there should be a little bit of voltage there, and it should be enough to power up an electric condenser microphone. So, oh yeah, hope if I have this on volts instead of ohms. Let's see, do we have any voltage there? Yeah, we've got about 1.9 volts, so yeah, I think that's going to work. Okay, well, me and my infinite stupidity, I forgot one single thing. If I connect the microphone up like this, it's going to throw off the bias of the circuit. Something I completely forgot about. So, yeah, I'm going to have to come up with a little better solution, I think. Right, okay. So, I've made the necessary modifications to the circuit. So, what I've done is I've taken that 100 microfarad capacitor and I've replaced it with two 220 microfarad capacitors back to back. So, that way, I have a capacitor which is about the same amount of microfarads, but now it's bipolar. It doesn't matter which side is going to get more positive and which side is going to get more negative. I've also added this resistor which goes from the positive to the microphone. Just for the hell of it, I've connected up the carbon granule microphone and I can tell you, when I plugged in that microphone, I know it's working because I got such loud feedback that it practically brought the wall down, so yeah. Okay, well, um, let's see how well this thing works. Now, I'm just going to turn up the gain Speaking into the microphone, I don't want to pick up this microphone because it's going to upset it. But anyway, I'm just going to turn the speaker down because we are getting a little bit of feedback. Okay, I'm just observing the meters here, making sure they don't peg. So, I am now speaking into the carbon granule microphone to see what it sounds like. Not a walkthrough, talk through, playthrough, review, anything like that. It's just me testing this microphone to hear what it sounds like. Okay, so we know this works. Now let's connect up the electric condenser microphone. So I'll just take this out. Good thing I've got the gain turned all the way down. Okay, let's find which one is the negative. Okay, it's this wire because that's got the little things on it that connect to the case of the microphone. If what I've just said makes any sense at all. Right, well, okay. Got this connected up, so uh, hopefully without shorting anything out, let's hear how this sounds. Okay, turning up my gain here. Needs a little more gain than the carbon granule microphone. But yeah, this seems to be picking up really well, although I only have the gain turned up about halfway, and I 
thought this would actually have a little bit more output than it does but I think it might just be I think we're probably putting too much voltage into this microphone okay well let's see how much voltage we've actually got at the microphone it's probably something ridiculously high and if I could get that on there we'll see what we've actually got and oh boy yes it is we've got 9.81 volts across that microphone and well I think that's a little bit high don't you okay well it looks like it's experimentation time so I put a 20 kilo ohm resistor in between the 10 kilo ohm resistor and the microphone and now you can see we've got 5.78 volts across it so I'm just going to adjust this until we get about 6 volts yeah, this is going to take a little bit of time you know what screw it I'll just put a 33k ohm resistor between the microphone and the plus okay there it is the 33 kilo ohm resistor now how does this microphone sound using the exact same gain as before and yeah I think it's a little bit louder so that was a pretty good idea so yes we can use this with electric condenser microphones and carbon granule microphones well that worked pretty well I think that just about brings us to the end of this video because now I've got a boatload of video editing to do so yeah and see you in 27,000 months when this is finally edited so until next time goodbye